Racing stripes are on anything from badass performance cars, this motorcycle I saw outside the office, and this weird guitar I found online. I mean, look at this thing. It looks fast, and it's a guitar. Stripes have become a universal symbol for speed, but why? Where'd they come from, and who was the first person to put racing stripes on a race car? I'm Nolan Sykes, and this is Wheelhouse. In the car world, racing stripes mean performance. If you have racing stripes painted onto your car, you're tapping into a decades-long tradition. It's like getting an insane clown posse tattoo. You're letting people know you're about that life. Mother even if you ironically put stripes on a beater, it's funny because we know stripes are meant for a true sports car. But why? American car companies have been painting stripes on their cars for decades. They started it in the 60s because that's when stripes started to mean fast. Ford had solid stripes, Chevy had little pinstripes around their stripes, and Dodge had stripes down the side. Each company had their own little twist on the racing stripe. But this doesn't answer a question because stripes didn't just appear overnight. So I looked to the car with the longest history of racing stripes I could think of, the Shelby GT350. The GT350 came out in 1965, and besides its otherworldly performance, its standout feature were the blue stripes over the white body. When I saw that, I thought, stripes, Shelby, ah, the Cobra. I forgot about the Cobra. I felt like an idiot, which, wasn't new, but, but it was a relief. The Cobra predates the Mustang by four years, and it's a car you can't even imagine without stripes. Surely, this must be the first car with stripes. But I go to look it up, and guess what? The first one didn't have stripes. It didn't have stripes until 1965, when the GT350 got stripes. I don't know what's going on. What happened in 1965? Well, I'll tell you, Pete Brock happened. The first Cobra was a cool race car, but it was about as aerodynamic as a brick. So when Carroll Shelby took it to Le Mans, he got destroyed down the long straights by the sleeker Ferraris. Shelby knew his next car for the 1964 season needed to be a coupe. Pete Brock was the guy he chose to design this Ferrari killer. Brock had done such a good job that he was promoted to head of special projects in 1965. And that's the year he decided to paint stripes. There's no way this isn't the guy who made the stripes. Someone asked him, Pete, your blue stripes, you've changed cars forever. How'd you come up with such a simple yet brilliant design? Well, he said, I didn't. What? I thought we had it. Brock gave credit to Briggs Cunningham, another guy I've never heard of. So who was Briggs Cunningham? He was some guy obsessed with motorsports. Cunningham showed up to Le Mans in 1951 with two cars he designed himself. They were called Cunningham C2Rs. As far as American cars go, the C2Rs were revolutionary. But Cunningham's longest lasting legacy was in the paint. The rules at the time said that every car had to be painted that team's national color. And America's colors were white and imperial blue. Now, normally, teams would just paint the body white and the frame blue, but Briggs was a bit of a showboat. He painted two blue stripes on top of the white from front to back because he thought it looked cool, and it did. Fans and teams alike couldn't stop talking about Cunningham's cars. They'd never seen anything like it. This was the first time racing stripes as we know them were ever used in competition. While all this was going on, a young Pete Brock was reading about it and he saw that Cunningham was building cars unlike anybody else. A guy no one had ever heard of was doing things that nobody thought he could. I think that's pretty cool. So Shelby's got their stripes from Pete Brock, a guy we've never heard of, who is honoring Briggs Cunningham, another guy we've never heard of. And the Daytona, Cobra, and GT350 were all such truly dominant cars that their stripes became synonymous with performance. Right now, there are hundreds of guys and gals that you've never heard of, painting racing stripes on their cars just like those other guys you've never heard of. I'm Nolan Sykes, a guy you've never heard of, saying thanks, guys I've never heard of, for everything. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. Uh, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really helps us out. Uh, we got a lot of new shows on Donut. Monday is Wheelhouse with me. Tuesday is Field Prep with Matt Field. He's building a Formula Drift Corvette. Wednesday is Science Garage with Bart. It's 
probably my favorite show right now. Thursday is up to speed with James Pumphrey, tells you everything you need to know about your favorite cars. Friday is the bestest with Tony, it's a top 10 countdown of all the coolest stuff. If you watch our channel every day, I guarantee you're gonna know a lot more about cars than when you started. Bye. <laughs>